Hello, I am Candles and Creepy Stuff, and welcome to my review on a beloved cult classic, The Prophecy. If you are interested in movies, classic literature, and all things creepy, be sure to hit that subscribe button, as I will be uploading more content each month. If you have a particular movie, book, or general topic you would like for me to cover, please feel free to list it in the comments below, or you can message me directly on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. Originally released in 1995, The Prophecy was written and directed by Gregory Wyden. He did have a few writing credits to his name prior to this film, however, The Prophecy was his directorial debut. I have seen worse first efforts, but I've seen way better too. The film features an incredible cast, including Christopher Walken as our villain, Gabriel, Eric Stoltz as an angel named Simon, and Viggo Mortensen, who plays Lucifer himself. Also in the film is Elias Cotius, who plays Thomas, and Virginia Madsen as Catherine. We start off seeing Thomas about to take his vows to become a priest when he receives a vision of the end of the world. This stops Thomas from committing to the church, and he ends up becoming a detective instead. Huge career leap in my opinion, but there's nothing like a poorly disguised plot device to give our protagonist a reason to even be in the movie. We meet an angel named Simon who shows up in Thomas' apartment one day confronting him about his faith. Thomas brushes Simon off and Simon leaves. I'm not sure what the point of this meeting was for as Simon never explains why he's really there and their conversation ends as abruptly as it starts. They also never meet again, so it's not like they become buddies. We cut away to Simon getting attacked by another angel and Simon ends up stabbing him in the neck with a piece of glass before pushing him out a window and the angel is then hit by a random car and dies. That's all it takes to kill an angel. The driver of the car is never brought up again, and we have no clue why there was a random car driving through an alley that has no exit. Conveniently enough, Thomas is assigned to the case of discovering what happened to this angel. After an autopsy, the dead angel apparently has no optical fibers or eyes. The toxicology report matches that of an aborted fetus. The dead angel is also a hermaphrodite. Meanwhile, Simon goes to the funeral of Colonel Hawthorne and sucks out his soul. We discover that angels have been looking for the darkest soul in existence to end a war between angels that has been going on for thousands of years. And apparently Hawthorne's soul is the perfect match. For some reason, the angels were not able to get to Earth fast enough for Stalin, Hitler, any serial killer ever. Taking in Hawthorne's soul apparently does severe damage to Simon and he wanders into a school nearby. This school is apparently in disarray because most of the rooms are not even used anymore, as the children in the town have dwindled drastically and all the children are just taught by one teacher. One of the children, Mary, stumbles on Simon hiding out and she happens to befriend him. No one thought to tell Mary to not talk to strangers. Like, what the fuck? She's at least eight, if not older. I would not trust this guy if I stumbled upon him. Mary doesn't return to class after lunch, so her teacher Catherine goes looking for her. I've also never seen a teacher in my life dressed like this no matter where they lived or how small and informal their classes were, but you gotta make that lead female character sexy, so give her a crop top. Catherine discovers Mary with Simon, and Simon apparently soothes her with his magical angel powers, and she just leaves. Simon puts the evil soul of Hawthorne inside Mary by full-on kissing her on the lips. It's very strange and especially upsetting that this girl in her first feature film was subjected to this, and all the adults were like, yeah, seems like a good idea. We finally meet Gabriel, who drops in on a guy named Jerry, who had tried to kill himself, but Gabriel is keeping him alive to be his little errand boy. Gabriel breaks into the police headquarters and destroys the body of the dead angel before the National Enquirer could get the scoop on his anatomy makeup. Gabriel realizes where Simon went and whose soul he was after, so him and Jerry set out to catch up with him. Gabriel and Jerry dig up Hawthorne's grave, only to discover that the soul is gone. Five seconds later, quite literally, Gabriel finds Simon and we get some exposition as to why they need the soul and the reason for the war between angels. Which essentially boils down to the fact that some angels are tired of being mere servants to God and want to wipe out humanity. That way God will love them again. We see where Kevin Smith got his inspiration to do dogma. Thomas visits a church and we get our first confrontation between him and Gabriel. And it's so good. Almost makes it excusable to throw this crap in here. Not sure why Gabriel would randomly write angelic script on a cave wall, much less have time to do so. We have a lot of compelling dialogue Angel, like this. I kill firstborns while their mamas watch. I turn cities into salt. I even, when I feel like it, rip the souls from little girls and from now till kingdom come. The only thing you will count on in your existence is never understanding why. Mary is taken to some ancient Native American grounds. Here we meet Lucifer. With 30 minutes left in the film, have a new character. 
perfect love. But like all true love, one day it withered on the vine. I love this scene where we get to see how Gabriel keeps people from passing on and making them drive him around. And the diner scene where he's just telling her to shut up, it's one of the funniest in the movie. Don't do that. In our final showdown, Lucifer kills Gabriel after ripping out his heart, and apparently Gabriel's existence is tied to Hawthorne's soul remaining in Mary? Lucifer takes a bite of Gabriel's heart and apparently doesn't like the taste and just throws it to the ground. But he takes the rest of Gabriel with him, fade out with the cliché Native American tribal music that was so common during the 90s. Overall, this movie is a bit of a mess, although it did obtain a massive cult following. I personally enjoy it for what it is, but don't go into this expecting something incredible. It's a movie to put on at a party when people are drunk and don't care. I think the last half hour is all over the place and Wyden just didn't know how to resolve the conflict he had created and it really fucking shows. There are some wonderful concepts such as having angels use dead humans as their lackeys. Let's get cracking, Rachel. No. Eternity here in that sagging skin suit. Or one more day with me. Why? Can't drive. But I can wait. Until stars burn out for you to make up your mind. I would have personally liked to see Simon live longer and have more angels helping Gabriel and others helping Simon. Let's see a showdown between the angels. This is their war. Leave Thomas in, I guess, and throw the rest out. Thomas is a great character, but he doesn't really get to do much except miraculously have his faith back again at the end of the movie. Gabriel isn't even defeated by Thomas. He gets taken out by Lucifer. And personally, Catherine and Mary are both bland characters. Mary only has a handful of lines in the film, and most of them are just Hawthorne speaking through her to say something fucked up to creep out the audience. Ever cut off a Chinaman's head? They don't bleed. Not like we do. Or maybe it was just the cold. And they could have just cut out Catherine's character completely and the film would have been vastly improved. She lends nothing to the story other than to say what the audience is thinking, I guess. If the audience is dumb. Every scene with Christopher Walken is wonderful. He is an incredible actor and obviously his presence on screen is electrifying. I'm on the edge of my seat anytime I see Christopher Walken come on the screen. I'm not sure who's right, who's wrong, but it doesn't matter. Sometimes you just have to do what you're told. That's who we are. You know, the great thing about a conversation like this, you never have to have it again. If you enjoy Christopher Walken in The Prophecy, be sure to check him out in The Prophecy 2 and 3, as he is in both, and he continues to deliver as Gabriel. All right. There's no birth here, why is that? I asked the woman at the Department of Motor Vehicles that same question. She told me not to bother her on a coffee break. <laughs> DMV. Both sequels don't take themselves as seriously, so I enjoyed them much better than this one. Also, it is worth noting that Gregory Wyden did not return to direct or write any of the sequels, so I think that that's why they were much better. There is a Prophecy 4 and 5, but it doesn't have Walken in it, so I haven't been in much of a rush to watch them. And without even seeing them, I would not recommend them because the best part of this franchise is Gabriel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any movie suggestions or book suggestions, please list those in the comments below. Until next time, guys.